and hello YouTube this is Thomas Judge back once again and today I'm actually going to be doing a follow-up to a custom bind prep video that I did a little while ago specifically we are going to be talking about the DC 1 million omnibus now I did a previous video on my channel several weeks back where I um, showed that I have the omnibus and I went through it and I basically got a pair of scissors and I went through and I was cutting out all the corners of all the issues that I didn't want. Because as it turns out, well over half of the omnibus was just kind of irrelevant garbage uh, from my perspective. Um, so I had that savaged, damaged omnibus by the end of that video. And um, I said I was going to take it away and get it redacted. Now redacted is a word that means to have something um, edited or shortened. Um, and so this is the result. Looks fine, right? Until, yeah, there we are. That's how slim it now is. It's about a third of the size it was previously. Now, I'll have a quick brief overview of it. It's you know, not a huge amount to talk about. Um, and there is one mistake, which I'll, I'll show you in a second. But it's got the same cover, got the same inside French flap. It has the same back on the dust jacket. And it has the same inside flap. Now, under the dust jacket, just to give you an idea, what happens is a binder will um, take it apart use the original boards, so I've got the same boards I had on the original um, omnibus there, but then because they're taking out the spine, they've covered it with just a simple um, fabric buckram, so absolutely straightforward. Um, I didn't have anything blocked on the side, so I've had no writing or anything put on it. Um, you can, if you want, get the whole thing redone so it's all one continuous uh, card thing, and you can have blocking done and all sorts. Um, I don't want to because it's expensive and it's going to be living under the dust jacket anyway. So, um, that's what I did there. In terms of the internal issues, um, as you would have seen on the previous video, and it, it is on my channel, on my uh, custom bind playlist, um, what I did is I went through and I read the entire omnibus, and then I very carefully went through and decided which issues I did and didn't want. Um, and I removed them, piece by piece. Um, and I showed in that um, in that video exactly how I do it. I, I cut the corners out and I use some scissors and there's the uh, lovely sound effect of me cutting through comic books with a pair of scissors. And then, um, yeah, I decided what issues I wanted and what issues I didn't. Now, the reason that I read this is I'm currently doing a um, overall read through of about 1,200 Superman single issues. Every single Superman issue from 1991 until 2011, keeping in mind I've already done a series in the New 52 and therefore covered 2011 till 2016. So I'm doing the 20 year gap before that of all those issues before I then dive into the post New 52 uh, rebirth era. So whilst doing that 20 year read through, um, every time Superman intersects with a wider DC wide event, so in this case DC 1 million, I'm reading that entire event. And hopefully in a few months time I'll start releasing that series as a, as a guide talking through Superman. Um, and every time it hits a an event like this, I will then do a dedicated video just on an event like this. That's a long-winded way of me saying there will ultimately be, relatively soon, dedicated videos on things like DC 1 million going through it issue by issue. And talking about what issues are essential, what issues are related, and what issues are token. So in this regard, I deleted, uh, oh, deleted sorry, I uh, edited out and cut out all the uh, token issues and all the related issues which were rubbish. And I've kept all the essential issues. So this is the key event. If DC was going to actually publish like a, a, an omnibus of just the good DC 1 million stuff, this is what they would have. I'm very happy with this. It's come out looking really good. Look how slim that is. Look how slim that is. Um, in terms of the spine here, the reason I've gone for black is that the original spine is just a continuation of this image. It's one big wrap around image all the way around. Um, but editing that so I could sort of compress it down and get the words DC 1 million, it basically meant distorting the image in the middle of it. So it actually looked really weird. This looked fine, that looked fine, but this looked really weird and squished down and distorted and stuff. So I just thought the hell with it. I'm not a graphic designer or anything. Um, so I just went for this, just using the logo like that, and then throwing in the DC Pill lo logo, which I am aware is from the New 52 era, but I don't really care because this is my favourite DC logo and I'm sticking with it. Um, I did mention there's one error here um, and I haven't put this in the title or the thumbnail because I'm not, I don't want to 
throw accusations at my blind a binder at all and I don't want to do a clickbait video of oh my god I made a mistake and I was wrong about this but basically what happened is my binders made a small error in binding this um, I do say in my videos when I've done explanations about binding prep and what you need to do is you have to rely on the fact that your binder is not a comic person absolutely not that's why I couldn't have originally just given them the omnibus and been like yeah can you please not um, keep oh, zoom in zoom out there we are. Sorry about that. Um, I didn't just give them a list saying, oh, can we get rid of the Catwoman issue and can we get rid of um, you know, issue X and issue Y and so on. Because a non-comic person doesn't know this. Keep in mind, you know, I meet people who think that Superman should be in the Avengers and they don't understand why he's not in the Marvel movies. I meet people who think, um, who don't know that Batman's got a secret identity. I mean, these are average people. I know it's hard to conceive of that, when you're watching comic videos on YouTube and you're probably on comic Twitter, if Twitter's still around at the time of this video. Um, but the thing is, from, for a lot of people, the majority of people, they know nothing about comics and your binder is likely to be no different. That's why when I go through and I do a redaction like this, I literally cut out the corners and I say these are the issues to get rid of because an idiot can follow those things. One thing I did do, and I didn't say this in the video because I kind of changed my mind last thing, is I, um, I basically... The the series ends here, and then there were some like random extra pages uh, pages and issues at the back which I talked about and I said weren't weren't brilliant. Um, basically, I then decided subsequently to keep this part of this issue. This is a cool little story involving um, Superman from the future and the Immortal Man, and I was like, yeah, do you know what? This would be cool. And so I was like, oh, we'll keep these pages. But one of the pages on the other side of it had the start of uh, some ridiculous story with Gorilla Grodd that wasn't very good. So what I said to my binder was, oh, can we keep this page, but can we photocopy it and reprint it and put it in just so it's the one page and the image on the back. Long story short, I, I gave them the reasonably clear instructions, but I didn't make it as utterly explicitly clear. And so as a result, what my binder did is you'll see this is the final page. So, so hang on. So the story starts here, then it's this page, this page, this page, this page, this page, then there's some images, randomly out of sequence, I don't know why they're there, and then there's this page, which is just like a splash image, and then there's this page, final page, and this page here, which is a two-pager, front and back, actually should go here, um, it's in the wrong place, this page should be here. And the reason that's done is simply because I guess um, I explained it in a slightly confusing way and I hadn't made it explicitly clear. That's totally my own fault. That's totally my own fault. Um, I could go back to my binder and go, hey, you've done this wrong. Um, but I don't really want to because it's not a big deal. Firstly, this is a bonus side story, which I was going to delete anyway. And then in the end, I thought actually at the last minute, I thought I'll keep it. Um, secondly, yes, it's my, it's my binder's. My binder's fault, my binder made the mistake because they're doing the binding. But I really view this as my responsibility because um, I should have been more explicit. And I will say this to anyone here that does custom binding, please do not assume whoever you're speaking to has any idea of comics. So for example, don't say, oh, I want all the Batman issues at the beginning and the Superman issues at the end because they won't know. They won't realise that Robin is part of the Batman universe or things like that. So you really have to just write dummies guys and do really clear simple basic explanations which in this case I didn't do and it's a very small mistake and frankly it's one I'm going to live with so there we have it um, I've saved myself about an inch of room but why is that important well do you know what let's do a bit of a shelving and you can see exactly what my library looks like so here we have it everybody, here is my physical comic shelf, or one of them rather. Um, this is the early DC, um, so as you can see we've got Batman, we've got some of the omnibuses there, we've got some of my JLA hardcovers, and I do prefer the hardcover format to the omnibus format, if at all possible. And then we've got a few others, and you can see there the gap, so let's have a look. Alright, let's see what this looks like, if I slide it in there. Oh, oh. nice isn't it? That's nice. So I appreciate money saving myself, you know, maybe an inch or so, but you know, the room, the room does count. The room does count. And ultimately I don't want issues I don't like um, in my collection. My general rule of thumb is if uh, a third or more of a comic has got rubbish issues in it, 
then I'll redact it. So for example, Teen Titans here is massive. And there are some issues in that which are kind of rubbish. Um, but ultimately, I think it was something like 20% of the issues were rubbish. So it's just not worth the hassle of redacting it. Whereas in DC 1 million, as you can see, over half the issues just got taken out. And that's just the kind of thing that, you know, space is at premium. All right. Hope that um, quick overview was useful, everyone. Um, yeah, this is this is a shot of my library. It occurs to me I haven't done a library tour in a couple of years and things have changed around quite a lot. Um, would anybody be interested in a library tour? If so, let me know down below. Let me know what kind of tour do you want. Do you want a long, like, one-hour exhaustive video? Uh, do you want just a five-minute quick overview? Or would you be after sort of um, what I did last time, which was a series of lengthy videos going through everything one at a time? Uh, I will try my best not to have a shaky cam if I do a library tour, but let me know. Be interested to know your thoughts. Would you guys be interested in uh, in a bit of this? Alright, thanks for watching everybody. As always, please like, comment, subscribe. As always, please follow me on Twitter at I am Thomas Judge, where I will post uh, a daily review of whatever comics I've been reading if you get an idea of what I'm up to on the channel. Um, and as always, please support the channel by heading over to Amazon.com and checking out my prose novel about superheroes. It's a completely original piece of work. The first episode in it is called Arrivals, and the series as a whole is called No Gods or Kings. You can find an excerpt of that on my website, nogodsorkings.com. Until next time, everybody, stay classy.